Welcome back to the 49ers Unscripted podcast presented by Microsoft Surface. This week, we are joined by 49ers All-Pro linebacker Fred Warner. Fred, before we can talk about football and everything going on, I mean, we are coming off of a holiday weekend, so I do have to ask you, how was your holiday? How was your Christmas? And obviously, didn't get to celebrate the way the team wanted to, but football aside, how was your holiday? Football aside, it was good. You know, it would have been a lot better had we pulled that one off Thursday night. But uh, nonetheless, it was it was good to spend time with family. I think that was the first time I've had, you know, a three day weekend or that much time off for Christmas in such a long time, you know, just because of football. So uh, that was pretty special. OK, so when you have because it's very rare, honestly, in this league that you do have, you know, that time around Christmas off. But did you get to separate yourself from football or did you actually get a chance to kind of be like the rest of us and sit on the couch and watch the games? Yeah. I mean, I, I still, I still sat and watched the games and uh, watched a little tape. So it was, it was still football involved, but uh, I was still able to be present with uh, my fiance and uh, her mom was in town. So it was, it was just a good weekend. I'm going to tell you, I was not present. I watched football the entire weekend. Uh -huh. That was not an option for me. But <laughs> yeah. uh, for you, getting to kind of watch a little bit of tape, did you get to do a little bit of prep work on the Texans at all? Yeah, I mean, that's that's an advantage too, right? Just being able to have a few days uh, extra to, to prepare for them, get an early look at, at how they're doing. Obviously, watching that game against the Chargers, uh, they had a heck of a game and and earned the, earned the win that uh on Sunday. So uh, we're, we got a, we got a big test ahead of us. They're a really good football team. They're coming into our place uh, with a chip on their shoulder. So we got to be ready. Yeah. And obviously 49ers too have a chip on their shoulder. You guys have some unfinished business and you guys have goals that I want to get into in just a little bit, but you know, you talked about it, despite the Texans record, they've won two out of their last three. They've got the rookie quarterback Davis Mills at the helm, but just watching that game and just your initial, uh, kind of studying of your upcoming opponent what have you seen out of this Texans offense well honestly it looks like they really want to be a physical offense you know just the, with the style that they play with their receivers block hard uh the running backs run the ball hard you like you mentioned they have a rookie quarterback but I feel like he makes uh he makes smart decisions he can make all the throws uh, and it's kind of got that uh a little bit of that it factor to him you know be able to extend plays so uh it looks like they got a really good offense and uh, with 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 a team like this, we're going to have to make sure that we're coming out, you know, from the very beginning, uh, you know, trying to set the tone. You guys have been setting the tone really well as of late. Um, defense playing extremely well, but we often talk about like players development and how you've seen a lot of your your teammates develop throughout the season. But I want to talk about defensive coordinator D'Amico Ryan's just as a guy who's been playing under him for a number of years. How have you kind of seen him develop as the season's progressed? Uh, it's been real uh, fluent. You know, I feel like he's he's come right into that role as as I knew he would, you know, being uh, being a player under him, you know, as my linebacker coach the first three years, my first three years. Uh, I mean, he's amazing. He's an amazing teacher, an amazing coach. You know, I've said it all along and I knew it was only a matter of time before he got this job. Uh, I know it's even a, a matter of time before he gets a head job somewhere, you know, and so. He just uh, he's just such a great leader uh, and it he was a great leader when he was a player and now he's a great leader as a coach and, uh, you know, leader of men and just being consistent, setting the standard, uh, upholding the standard and raising it. You know, he's he's everything you want in, in a defense coordinator. All right. So we got the chance to love up on D'Amico a little bit, but I do want you to love up on your teammates as well. I mean, you guys have dealt with your share of rotation at players at the linebacker position, but that's also caused a lot of some of the other guys to have to step up. I mean, we can talk about Aziz. He's been phenomenal. You have Flan, you have Marcel Harris, who's had to step up. But what have you seen out of your fellow linebackers and, and what's enabled you guys to be able to step up without any hitch? Uh, you know, I think it's just a it's a product of great coaching first, first of all, and also of just the standard that we've set in that room from, you know, back when I had Malcolm Smith there and Quan Alexander was here. Like there's just been a a, a like a, a standard set where it doesn't matter who's on the field. Like we, we kind of just conduct ourselves in a certain way when we're out there in between the white lines, you know, where we're setting the tone. We're the ones making the big hits. We're making the big plays. Uh, you know, communicating uh, out there for the entire defense. 
Uh, and so I think that's why you've seen like different guys stepping into different roles this year. You know, we, we lost Dre early on, but then Aziz came in and he, I mean, he had a heck of a training camp and it just kind of took him right into having a phenomenal season. Uh, and you mentioned guys like Flan and Marcel, you know, guys coming in and, and doing a great job in their roles as well. And also for our special teams unit. Um, so I, I'm, I'm really proud of how the room has progressed and, and continue to grow. All right. I want to switch to the other side of the ball just a little bit. I mean, there's been a lot of discussion about potentially Trey Lance seeing some playing time, but Kyle Shanahan, he spoke with the media this week and he's talked about how he's noticed him progress specifically on the scout team, discussing his improvement in accuracy, his decision making. And he said that it's something that the defense has been able to also pick up on. Have you noticed any development, any changes, any improvements in Trey Lance over the last few weeks? I mean, yeah, absolutely. I've, I've talked about it um, before and I, I'll say, you know, there was a time where he he maybe wanted not to like make uh, make mistakes out there against us. You know, he would he would hold on to the football and use his legs to run and stuff. And, I, and so I kind of had to pull him to the side and be like, hey, Trey, listen, like this is your time to like to make mistakes and to try to fit balls into tight areas, like kind of kind of just make make it hard for yourself. Go out there and and see what and just see what you can do because like out here it don't matter like you're not you're not trying to win a game you're trying to just you're trying to get better as a player and so I think the moment that kind of clicked for him is when we started seeing him just like just diamond like different different balls in different places like things that he probably didn't even know he was you know capable of and he he really that's where I really started to see uh you know the the growth in his game and you know he's he has continued to get better and better as uh, we all anticipated, you know, it's just a confidence thing. He always, he's always had the talent um, and he's only going to continue to get better with more reps. I think that's really special. I mean, you hear about, you know, defensive guys talking to other defensive guys about what they see on the field and, you know, how to prep for something, but it's maybe we just don't hear it all the time, but I think it's really special at the fact that it's like, hey, you're noticing something and you see a rookie and you're pulling him along like, hey, this is what I see. This is what you can do in ways to, that he can start improving. But why I brought that up is because I remember when he was drafted, I was doing a lot of interviews and people would ask me like, you know, what's Trey Lance like? How is it meeting him? What kind of guy is he? And I feel like every time I spoke about him, the easiest correlation I could make was to you. And I said, it's because of one, it's his, (laughs) but it's because of his maturity and just his eagerness to just absorb everything around him. And so being a guy that was drafted from San Francisco, I mean, not terribly too long ago, but you were quickly kind of thrown into a starting role, but how do you see him kind of handling his rookie season? I know it's vastly different from yours, but have you, how have you kind of been able to see him kind of take on the pressures that come with being an early draft pick? Yeah, I mean, he's done it. Uh, I think he's done an outstanding job, honestly. You mentioned the maturity, uh, especially. I mean, he's he came in younger than I did. You know, I came in as 21. He came in at 20, I think. So, uh, I mean, he's he's come in and handled it really well. Uh, it's it's very different when you're having to, I mean, the, the expectation level in the, uh, you know, the stuff that you have to deal with as being a rookie quarterback, uh, especially where he was taken in the draft. You know, there's already all that pressure involved in, in all that, but he's, he stayed, he stayed even keeled through all of it. He has a great mentor in Jimmy um, to kind of learn behind. And obviously the the coaches that he's learning from are, are top tier. So uh, I think he has just a really great um, foundation that he's building upon right now. And like I said, in practices, he's continuing to get better and better uh, seeing different things. And even, even when he, he has been thrown out there in live bullets, I feel like he has done ad, an admirable job um, and, and done some really good things. You know, there's, there's always going to be hiccups in, in, you know, your, your rookie year, whatever you do. So I think he's just done a really good job of handling all that and uh, staying, staying level-headed. All right, let's look at the big picture. It's hard to believe we're already in week 17, two more games left, but looking at where you guys are right now, how much awareness is there around the locker room at the opportunity that lies ahead for you guys? Yeah, I mean, we're aware of it for sure of, of uh, you know, kind of just people always talking about all oh, playoffs and playoffs. That's which is I mean, that's what you're playing for to start the season. Right. Like that's what that's the whole goal is to try and make it to the to the tournament just so you can have a chance at winning the the ultimate goal, the Super Bowl. Um, you know, and so I, but I think what's important right now in the time that we're in 
is we really got to dial in on just focusing on this one game. You know, it's easy to kind of look ahead and say, oh, we got to just we got to win these last two or, you know, what seating are we going to get in the playoffs? You go all day like, oh, if this team loses this and then there's just so many different scenarios like, listen, let's just control what we can control. That's, you know, Houston Texans at home on Sunday at one like that's and that's it. You know, if we if we just focus on that, OK, boom, put that in the bag and then we'll focus on whatever whatever's next. But right now we just got to focus on that. So. 2019 obviously was vastly different at this point in the year you guys were more so just fighting for that number one seed in the nfc this time around you guys are fighting to make sure you guys stay in that playoff race how do you think that maybe guys like yourself and some of the other veterans that were on this team in 2019 how do you think that your experience playing in this tough uh December football can kind of play in your favor and kind of help out some of these younger guys in these last two weeks of the season yeah well it's a it's a much different um much different situation than what 2019 was you know I mean we were we were the head dogs at that like at this point in the year where we knew we were number one going into the playoffs like we're going to be at home the whole playoffs and or I guess it didn't we didn't know that until week 17 when we won that game but uh nonetheless this situation uh, I think just what I could give, like, you know, from my experience from that year is just during this time in the season, what's most important is just execution, uh, you know, at the highest level. And, you know, it's just it all comes down to one or two plays in some of these games. You talk about that Seattle game in 2017. It came down to Dre making a goal line stop uh, where you just, you know, knock the guy back by an inch to win us the, uh, you know, the division championship and and uh just little things like that. So, I mean, every game comes down to those one or two plays. Had we made one or two more plays in the Titans game, we want, we win that game. So how do you do that? Okay. Well, you just make sure that dirt throughout the week, you take a personal responsibility upon yourself saying, okay, well, I need to make sure I'm looking at tape extra hard. I'm taking care of my body. So I'm available to even be out there. And um, every single practice rep is to a T like just very, dialed in specific to you and if all if everyone on our roster is doing that then there's no there's no doubt that we can achieve what we want to fred warner he's a leader he's a veteran he's a pro bowler he's an all pro and he does it all fred we appreciate the time uh, we're looking forward to seeing you and this 49ers defense doing what you guys have been doing this sunday against the rookie quarterback davis mills and uh looking forward to what we want to see more of in uh, january football thank you for having me <laughs> hey faithful don't forget to click here to subscribe to our youtube <laughs>